In this video, we're going to talk about how the narcissist will keep you stuck in a relationship by using the Hoover Maneuver. is a tactic that narcissists use in order to keep you stuck in a relationship. The narcissist will use the Hoover maneuver when the narcissistic supply, which would be the empath or the partner, wants to leave the relationship because for narcissists, they have to be the ones who decide when the relationship is over. They have to be the ones who like to cause pain and devastation to their person when they leave the relationship so they can't handle it when the other person is the one that leaves and that also shows that they're not able to keep control over that person and for a narcissist keeping control over their narcissistic supply is essential when somebody hoovers when a narcissist hoovers they will do anything that they can anything and everything that they can to draw you back in a relationship when i was with narcissists I was hoovered many, many times. Now, if this sounds like anything that you've experienced, leave a comment below. So when I was with a narcissist, I was hoovered all the time. And that's what kept me in the relationship for so long. Because if it were up to me, if I didn't have that experience, if I didn't feel like I had to stay, I would have been gone. I mean, the relationship, the connection never would have began in the first place. When I was being hoovered, what my ex-boyfriend would do is, for example, I would say, you know what? I don't want this abuse. I'm not having it. I don't want to talk anymore. And what he would do is he would just show up at my house. Just show up at my house, which is a lack of boundaries because you weren't invited and I told you not to talk to me anymore. He would just show up at my house. And that's something that I noticed happens with narcissists very, very often. I've had friends who had experienced that as well. So that's a pattern that I see when it comes to narcissists. They like to show up at your house without your permission. Another thing that my narcissistic ex would do is when I wanted to leave the relationship, first, he would come to me and say how much he loved me, don't leave me, uh, you know, I need you. And then when that didn't work, then he became angry. So when that didn't work, then he would call me. And when I wouldn't answer, he would leave these voicemails talking to me in a derogatory way, calling me all kinds of names, disrespecting me. And then when that didn't work, he would go back to being very kind. When I still don't answer, then he'll call me again and say that he's going to have people come and jump me. Another thing that my narcissistic ex would do is just call over and over and over and over. And I wouldn't answer. And he would call over and over and I would block him. And then he would make his number unavailable and continue calling me. And what he would do is he would call my cell phone and my house phone at the same time for hours after we already told him, don't call the house phone. So they have no boundaries. And again, they're willing to do whatever it takes. So not only did my ex come by unannounced all the time, he would come by with gifts sometimes. And I remember one time when I told him that I didn't want to be bothered with him, the next morning I woke up to watching him standing over me as I slept. He broke into my apartment because he, he, he wasn't getting my attention. So he broke into my apartment and was watching me sleep. They, they don't care. They're, the ends justifies the means for them. So they are willing to say anything, do anything to bring you back. After he broke into the apartment, I put a bar on the door and I got messages saying, it doesn't mean how much, it doesn't matter how many bars you put on the door, I'm still going to get in. So he was threatening me. That's another thing that narcissists would do to hoover you. They will use threats. He would also call my friends. He would involve my friends, call my friends to get them to contact me. And the funny thing is they did do that. And that was another Hoover method because when my friends called me, they're concerned. And then that made me empathetic <laughs> and I would call my boyfriend. 
they are willing to once again do anything. Let me show you about this Hoover. I want to show you something. This right here is my restraining order that I had to get against my boyfriend because he was stalking me when I broke up with him. This man got an undercover cop car. He purposely bought an undercover cop car. So once I broke up with him, he can stalk me and I wouldn't know because I didn't know he had that car. He would go on Facebook or somehow, even though I blocked him, get in contact with me saying, oh, you look nice today. Oh, your hair look nice, which was very, very unnerving. So needless to say, I had police dispatch on speed dial. I wanna show you guys something. And like I said, this is the tell all series, okay? This is the tell all series. So we need to talk about this because this is a very good example of the Hoover. On this page, this is a conversation between my ex and I. And once I stop talking to him, I'm gonna to read to you guys, I'm gonna to read to you guys what this says. The first message that he sent to me says that he just wanted to make sure that I got his text messages because I wasn't responding. And he said, okay, now I know you did, so that's all. Now fuck your life, your career, and cheers for the homeless bitch you will become until late, never, you fucking whore. Those of you who have been with narcissists, you know that we try to talk rationally to these people. We try to talk in a sensible way to these people. And we talk to them in a way that makes sense, is logical. However, these individuals are so illogical that you cannot talk reason or sense into them because it's not about you. It's about them and what they want. So I tried to explain this to him. This is my experience. I said, your text messages are hurtful. I'm taking time to heal from the verbal and emotional abuse I have endured over the past year. At the same time, I love myself first. I can no longer allow myself to be put down, blamed for things I didn't do, called names, angry, sad, feeling bad more often than not, and in constant pain, especially at the hands of someone who I gave my love to. I love too hard to be taken for granted. As you can see, our pain pleasure cycle will not end because even though we have come up with several solutions for the constant arguing, we argue all the time and I'm not an argumentative person. Why are we arguing all the time? And this person was saying to me, you're the only one I argue with. You're the only one I fight with. I don't fight with anybody else. I said, we've come up with several solutions for the constant arguing, none have worked. This cycle has been happening since January and it has come to an end. I forgive you for your words. However, I'm not ready to be friends at this time. They, oh my gosh, you guys, that's another way that they hoover. Oh my gosh. Wow, I just thought about this. And it's interesting because the first narcissist that I dated is when I was 13. I was in middle school and I had an abusive relationship with a narcissistic kid at my school. And I just realized a parallel because when I was in that situation, when I was in that situation when I was younger, when I was 13, my boyfriend would always be saying, let's just be friends, let's just remain friends, let's just remain friends. If you ever hear that from a narcissist, mark my words, okay? Pay attention. If you ever are with a narcissist and this person says to you, let's just be friends, do not buy it. Do not buy it, they're fooling you. Remember, it's about them not you. So when they say that to you, that's their method of hoovering you back because they don't want to just be friends and be platonic friends. Are you kidding me? No, they want to be with you or whatever they were getting from you. That's their goal. So they always say things like, okay, I'll change. I can change. I'll change. I'll do better. I'm not going to do that. I'll change. That's one. And then the other one is, Let's still be friends. We could just be friends. We could just be friends. There's no such thing as that. There's no such thing as that. First off, nobody changes unless they want to. Nobody changes unless they want to. And for narcissists, that works for them. They've been doing that since they were knee high to a grasshopper. That's the way they operate in the world. They're not going to change and be a normal functioning human being all of a sudden. You know, they don't have that capacity. Oh, all of a sudden, I'm going to change and be a normal person. 
and be a good person. No, they, they don't They do not do that. And when they do this little thing saying, I'm going to change, I'm going to change, they may make really small changes, but overall, it doesn't make a difference because they're still fighting. There's still things going on. Those are two ways that the narcissist will hoover you, and those are really, really important. So don't forget those. This guy has the audacity to say, after he said, you know, um, you fucking whore, uh, and the funny thing is, look, this guy can never spell whore right. Look at the spells it. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. This used to crack me up. You see that? Whore. H-O-R-E. H-O-R-E. I'm like, look, dude, if you're going to call me out of my name, if you're going to call me a whore, at least spell it right. Learn how to spell it right. Like, I can't be offended. You can't even spell that right. That's not a word. H-O-R-E is not a word. You sound stupid. But anyway, you guys, so after he says all that to me, right, he has the audacity to say, I made them up because I need you and need to hear you, Lachon. Give me one more chance to prove my love and change for you. <laughs> oh, Lord, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. I remember one time, I remember one time, he, he actually said to me, he was like, let's run away and go to Mexico together. Let's go run away and go to Mexico and be together. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, are you serious? You think I'm going to go to another country with you? You think I'm going to go to Mexico with you? Why? So I can end up in the desert with peanut butter rubbed all over my body? Tied up? Like, in what? No, no, no. Then he starts saying, okay, fuck your life. You're a bitch and always will be there. You'll never succeed and you are a failure in your father's eyes. He didn't even know my dad, which is weird. You're a failure in your father's eyes and a bitch that can't be trusted. And then get that. Bitch, 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 right? Ridiculous. I had this packet, this restraining order was like this thick at one point. But I, a lot of the pages, I just didn't want that energy anywhere around me. So I shredded them. Let's see. He's telling me to block him. He's saying some things I can't say on camera. Now, and then he's saying that he hates me. Now I know what hate means. And I'm going to tell you, stay the fuck away from me, bitch. Don't ever dial my number because I promise I will burn you on Facebook and any other public shit. Okay, that's another thing. A smear campaign, which I will do a video about that. But they love to do the smear campaign when you leave them. They will go out of their way to ruin your name. I just thought about a smear campaign that this guy did to this woman. And when she left him, what he did is he took all, you know, a bunch of her nude pictures, got her nude pictures, made copies after copies after copies after copies after copies, and sprinkled them all around town. Who does stuff like that? Like narcissists and sociopaths. Like that's crazy. That's literally crazy. Like, and, but the crazy thing is, and the woman went back. And the woman went back, which is super crazy. Which is super crazy. But yeah, like they do, you know, just crazy stuff like that. Uh, my ex-boyfriend was saying that he was going to take the pages of my journal and post them up all over my school. And actually, see, that's what that's what ended up uh, making me fall out of love when he went into my journal. But I'm going to talk about that in another video. He says that he's going to burn me and everything. And he says, and I warned you, right? So he's threatening me. And then get this. Look at this. Okay. You guys got to see this. This is hilarious. So after everything he just said to me, right? This is him. And, and you can't see this picture because it's in black and white. But his arm had like an abrasion. It had an abrasion on it. And then he says, save me. I already started fucking shit up. Get me out of here, please. You're the only person I have. Wake up, boo-boo. I love you and want to spend the rest of my life with you. Really? Really? <laughs> After you just went off and said this and that and this and that? like, And, and what I was saying, guys, is this was a lot thicker. This was a lot thicker. He said a lot more. You know, this is just, this is just a few, you know? Look, that's what they do. Miss Con, Miss Con. It's so, it, you know what? It's so common though. It's so, so common. It's so common. This is what narcissists do a lot of the time. These are all voicemails. All voicemails. You know, it's crazy. Voicemails from over and over from seven o'clock in the morning to 10. So, that's an example of how they hoover. And the unfortunate thing is, 
when you get with a narcissist, they create a brain addiction. They literally create addiction in your brain like drugs. Even though you don't want to be in the situation anymore, and even though you may want to leave, when they come back, your neurotransmitters, your dopamine starts shooting off again. And that makes you want to get back together with that person. Now that you know what hoovering looks like, you can see it. You can see it and you can avoid it because it's not just a narcissist telling you how much they love you and, oh, I want to be with you and, oh, I'm going to change and, you know, I'm really intending on doing that. And let me give you gifts because I love you so much. No, 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 no. They're, they're going to do the same stuff that they did before. Nothing's ever going to change. You know, it's like nothing changes. Just be careful, all right? Just be mindful. When you see that kind of behavior, you, when you want to leave and they're doing everything to bring you back, they're hoovering you. And then you have to get away. You have to get away. Because oftentimes, they don't stop. And they may lay dormant. They may lay dormant for a while because they want you to think that they're moving on or whatever. But they come back wow it's 4 44 p.m it's 4 44 p.m that is a number of angelic healing so i really like that that's how the narcissist will pull you back in to a relationship that you don't want to be in by using the hoover maneuver again be careful when you see this type of behavior and if you've experienced anything like that leave a comment in the comment section below don't forget to thumbs up and like this video also you can subscribe to my channel if you are new subscribe to my channel if you are returning and have not subscribed yet you can also check out your love readings as well they are arranged by sign and if you are interested in booking a private love reading with me all that information is in the description box below so i can't wait to see you guys here for another video of crossing the sociopath